Welcome to part three of this stylized desert scene blender tutorial series. If you haven't seen the other parts, then definitely check out the tutorial playlist with the link in the description. So in this part, we're going to be creating the large rocks and the small rocks, and then making a procedural material for those objects. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the finished tutorial files, you can find that on my Gumroad and my Patreon. The links are in the description. And then one more thing before we start, I wanted to let you know about my furniture and home asset pack for Blender. In this furniture and home 3D model asset pack, you will get 250 furniture and home Blender 3D models. Pre-set up for Blender's asset browser and ready to add to your project. Quickly fill in your 3D scenes just by dragging the models from the asset browser into your 3D scenes. The models have been split up into five different categories in the asset browser. The categories include office assets, living room assets, kitchen assets, dining room assets, and a combined bedroom and bathroom asset. There's also a free demo available that you can try out before purchasing. Check out the product with the links in the description, and you can also find the full product video with the link in the description. Alright, so I'll press Shift C to center the 3D cursor. Let's also go back to Solid View, and I'll go to the Add menu, and I'm just going to start by adding a cube. And I'm going to scale the cube down by 0.5, hit Enter. I'll press Control A and just apply the scale, so that's the object's new default size. And let's just move the cube over here so we have a bit more space. So we're going to start by modeling one of the large rocks. So I'll go into edit mode and I'll go to front view and I'll move this up on the Z axis just like that so that the origin point is almost at the bottom. Then let's go to the face select. We'll just select this face and we're just going to delete the faces. I'll now select this top face here and I'll go to front view and I can scale this down and bring it down a bit farther because I don't want it that small. And then I can extrude it and we'll scale it down a bit and then extrude it up again. And we're just modeling the basic shape of the rock. So we're going to be adding some modifiers to kind of give it more detail but just for now we're going to model the basic shape of the rock maybe rotate this over scale that up a little bit extrude it up so we're just going to make kind of some lumps here kind of like some layers of rock which are going around maybe scale up a few of these parts if it's a bit too big you can also like select a face here and extrude it and scale it down a little bit something like that and then select the bottom face and delete it all right so we're basically making a pillar of rock so let's extrude this up again kind of rotate it extrude it up again and extrude it and scale it Extrude this out again, and we're going to have a big piece kind of on the top here, and then extrude that and scale it down a bit. Let's now press Control 3. So Control 3 is going to add a subdivision surface with three levels. If I open up the side panel here, go to the modifiers, let's make the levels viewport and render, turn that all up to three, and then we can use the object context menu and shade the object smooth. We'll go back into edit mode and I can add a few more loop cuts. So Control R to add a loop cut, left click and right click so the loop stays in the center, maybe scale that up a bit. You can also add a few more loop cuts just along here by pressing Control R just to sharpen up some of the edges here, but we are going to be adding adding a few more modifiers to give it more detail because right now it just looks pretty lumpy. Let's also select everything and I think I want to scale everything down a bit because I think it's just a little bit too high up. So let's go back to object mode and I now want to add the displace modifier to make it kind of lumpy and look like a rock. So let's click here and add modifier and we're going to search for the displace modifier. We need to add a new texture here so we'll just click on new and I can just call this rock noise and also I can rename it right here so rock noise and then to add the texture we'll click on this button here. This is going to bring us to the texturing panel so we can add a texture. And let's change the type. And we're not going to use image or movie, we're going to use clouds instead. And here on the size, I'm going to turn this to a 0.14. Now it's way too strong right now, so let's click back here on the modifiers. And this strength value, we're going to turn way down. And I'm going to turn it to like a 0.1. That's pretty good. So now you can see it looks pretty bumpy. And then I also want to add a texture which makes it look kind of like that layered rock, which is kind of the rock in a desert. So I'll click on add modifier. We're going to search for another displace modifier. And this one, let's click on new. And this one, I want to actually click on this button here to duplicate the texture. So click there to duplicate it. So it is separate. Let's click on the rock noise and I'm going to rename it to rock layers and I'll rename the modifier to rock layers as well. And I'll click on this button here to go to the texturing panel. And then instead of clouds, we're going to change this to the wood instead. And it's called wood, but it's basically Blender's procedural wave texture. So now we have the wave texture. Let's go back here to the modifiers and we need to make it much less strong. So I find that a strength value of like a 0 0.04 looks pretty good. So you can see here it is before and after. Now if I turn it up to make it a bit stronger, you can see that there is a problem and that is that it's rotated sideways. 
sideways. You can kind of see right here, if I make it stronger, it's rotated sideways and it's too big. So to change the rotation and scale the texture, I'm gonna use the object coordinates. So we're gonna use the coordinates of an object. So coordinates, choose object. And then for the object, we wanna choose some kind of object that we can rotate and change. So I'll go to the add menu. Let's go to empty and we're just gonna add a plane axis and I'll move the empty over here. And then if we click on the object, let's go back down here. And on the object here, we can click on the eyedropper and we're gonna choose the empty. So now if I grab the empty, I can scale it and I can rotate it. And you can see the empty's position is gonna change where that wood texture is. So I can scale it up and down. I can make it smaller. If I want more of those or less of them. And then of course you can rotate it so you don't want it to be sideways. So you wanna make sure that all the waves are pretty straight going back and forth. So just like that is pretty good. And you can of course move it around to change where it is, but it's gonna pretty much look the same wherever. Maybe I'll just stick it right there. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And it might just be a tiny bit too strong. So on the strength value, I could turn this to like a 0 0.035. So it's a little bit less strong, but something like that. So now we have this really cool pillar of a desert rock. So now I'm gonna be duplicating this object and making three more of them. So I'll select the object and I'll press Shift D to duplicate and let's just drop it over here. And I can go into edit mode. I'll go into wireframe and I'm just gonna box like all the top parts here and we'll delete those vertices. And then I'll go back to solid view, hold down the Alt key and select that loop right there. And I can scale it down a bit and I'll press the F key to fill a face. So if I go back to object mode, you can see now we have just a small pillar, but I wanna make it look a little bit different. So I'll go into edit mode. I can just box select some of the vertices and I'm gonna click on this button here to turn on the proportional editing and I can just kind of move this around and make it look a little bit different and more unique. So maybe make it come up a little bit and come down a little bit. Also give it a random rotation and maybe scale the whole thing down a little bit. All right, so that looks a bit better. And we'll make another one. So I'll select this one, duplicate it and I can move it over here. I'll go into edit mode and I can kind of rotate this one around and let's maybe scale it down a bit so it's a bit smaller. We can also bring out this face a bit. And if I select this part here, I can maybe rotate it and bring it up a bit just to make it a little, little bit more interesting. Let's add a loop cut right here. So press Control R and left click and right click. And then I could scale this loop up a little bit like that. Maybe select this loop and bring it down a little bit. So we have another rock there. And then we'll select this rock again and we'll duplicate it and move it over here. We'll go into edit mode. And this one, I wanna be kind of like a pillar, but I want it to be squished down quite a bit. So let's squish it down on the Z axis. Also scale it down and bring it down like that. And then of course, to make it look a bit different, we can go into wireframe, just box select some of these vertices, maybe scale them a bit, bring that in a little bit and maybe bring this up so it's a little bit bigger. And also you can see if I go back to object mode, because these loops now are really close to each other, there's kind of an overlap here. So what I'm gonna do is hold down the Alt key, select that loop there, and you can hit X to delete, and you can dissolve edges, and that's just gonna get rid of that loop there. Hold down the Alt key, select that loop, we'll hit X, and we can just dissolve edges. And we're just gonna do that a few more times. So just dissolving some of those edges where there's a bit too much detail, like we don't really need that much much detail there or that one there and this one here and of course we want it to look different from the other one so let's give it a random rotation maybe box select some of these parts in edit mode rotate them over a little bit bring this down a little bit and also this part here I want to delete it so go to the face select we can select all of these faces here and we'll delete the faces and then we'll go to the vertex select we're going to hold down the shift key select these vertices and i'll press f to fill a face there maybe bring that out a little bit just to make it look quite a bit different all right and that is looking pretty good so i'm going to bring these all together closer so that's going to be it for all of the large rocks now i want to actually apply the modifier so that this is actual geometry because if the rocks are moved around or scale or something you can see they could get messed up the displacements could get messed up so what i'm going to do is first make a backup just in case i want to go back to the modeling and then we can apply the modifiers so i'm going to box select all the objects and we don't want to select the light though so just box select all of these five objects i'll press shift d to duplicate and then just right click so they stay where they are i'll hit the m key we're going to move them into a new collection and i can call it rocks backup all right click on OK. So now here on the rocks backup, we can click on this button here just to hide the rocks backup collection. So now we're going to hold down the shift key and select these four objects. And to apply all the modifiers at once, you can just click on object and you can click on convert and we're going to convert to mesh. 
So if I go into edit mode now, you can see it's all geometry. So now this empty here, we don't need this empty, so you can just select the empty and you can delete the empty. So let's box select all of the rocks. We'll press the M key to move them to a new collection. Let's click on new collection and I can rename this to large rocks. All right, click on okay. So now we have the large rocks and you can click and drag the collection and just like move it right up here. Uh, so it's right next to the cacti. Maybe actually stick it down there. So we have the cacti and then the rocks. So let's now create the materials for the rocks. So I'll go over here to the shading workspace and let's zoom into the rocks by pressing the period on the numpad to zoom into the selected object. We'll go into the rendered view. Let's click on new to add a new material and I can just call this large rock. And you could, of course, add a rock texture if you want to, if you have some texture maps, but I'll be creating kind of a simple rock material. So we'll go to the add menu and let's add a noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture right up here. And with the noise texture selected, I'll press control T to add the texture coordinate mapping nodes. And let's use the object coordinates to place the texture on the object more evenly. So the object will go into the vector and I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. Let's change some of the settings. So I'll turn the scale to a 20 and the detail here, you could turn it up to the max of 15. However, I found with Blender Eevee to make things a little bit less laggy. If you just turn the detail down to like a 10 instead of 15, that can help just a little bit. It might help a little bit to have Eevee be a little bit less laggy. Now I also wanna mix the noise texture with a wave texture and we're going to have some dark waves to kind of give it that cool layered effect. So let's go to the add menu. Let's add the wave texture. We'll drop it under the noise texture and the object coordinates. We want to use that. So we'll put the mapping vector into the vector, of the wave texture. Let's control shift and select the wave texture to preview it. And let's change a few of the settings here. So I want to change the type here the band direction, instead of X, let's choose Z instead. And that way it's gonna rotate around like that. So there's gonna be waves around the rocks. And we'll change a few of the settings. So I'll turn the scale to two. I also wanna turn the distortion up to seven, so it's a bit random. And the detail here, I'll turn up to 15. Or you could leave the detail down to like a 10, so it's not quite as laggy. So I'll do that. And the detail scale, I can turn that up to like a two. So now I wanna mix these two together. So what you can do is hold down the shift key and select both textures. And you can press control zero. Control zero is gonna add this mix color node and it will plug them both up. And that's using the feature of the Node Wrangler add-on. So this one's just gonna go into the top one and the wave texture will just go into the bottom one. Now on the type here, I'm gonna change it to a darken so it just adds the dark values. So if I drag this factor, now it's just adding the dark values of the waves. So it's basically adding the waves on top of the noise. So I'm gonna turn the factor to like a 0.15 just so that the waves are very subtle, but I wanna make the waves a bit bigger so you can see them better. So to do this, I can go to the add menu and I can search for the map range node and I'll put the map range between the wave texture and the mix color. And then let's change the settings here. So what I want to do is take this from min and turn it up. And I'm actually going to turn it up to like 8.5. So if I control shift and select the map range, you can see here it is at zero and then here it is at 0 0.5. So it's just kind of making those bigger. So now I can take the darken and let's put that into the base color and I can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. Now I want to change the colors. So in between the darken and the principal, I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to search for a, another mix color and we'll put this right here. And then we can put the result. This is going to go into the factor. So the black and white values of the texture are going to determine what parts are color A and what parts are color B. So for color A, I want to make this kind of like a light brownish color. And for color B, I'm going to make this kind of like an orangey color to look like a desert rock. And if you want to use the same exact colors I'm using for color A, the hex value will be 6, 8, 4, E, 4, 2. And for color B, the hex value is going to be C, E, 7, E, 5, 4. Now it's a bit hard to see the wave texture, and that is because I actually forgot to turn off the clamp. So if you turn off the clamp, you can definitely see the wave texture a bit better. And then if you wanted to, you could turn the factor up maybe just a little bit, like a 0.24 maybe like a 0.25, something like that. But I don't wanna turn the factor up too much because it'll look like stripes. But just keep it very subtle, maybe just like a 0.22. And then let's also put this into the normal to give it some bump. So I'll put the darken result into the normal. And then to convert it to bump data, I'll go to the add menu. Let's search for the bump. We're gonna put the bump right here in between the darken and the principal. And then to convert it to bump data, we actually need to plug the result 
into the height value. And it's a bit too strong, so let's just turn the strength down to like a 0.1 so it is more subtle. And then I actually think inverting it looks a little bit better, so I'm gonna invert it. It's also a bit too shiny. You can see how shiny the rock is. So I'm gonna turn the roughness here way up to like a 0.8, so it's quite a bit more rough. And actually, if you look kind of far away at this, I think the stripes are even a little bit too easy to see. So let me turn the factor da back down to like a 0.15 because I really want the dark lines to be pretty subtle. So let's add this material to the other rocks. So I will hold down the shift key, select all the other rocks, and then lastly, select this one. And I'll press Control L and we can link the materials. So they all have the same material. All right, so let's go back over here to the layout and back into the rendered view. Let's press Control S to save and that's it for the large rocks. So let's now create these small rocks and these rocks will be very low poly. So I'll go to the add menu, let's add a cube and I can move this cube over to the side and I'm gonna scale this cube down to a 0 0.05 hit enter, and you can press period to zoom into the cube, so it should be very small. We'll press control A, and we're just going to apply the scale. And we can go back to solid view while we're modeling. So let's go into edit mode, and I can bring this up on the z-axis like that. I can also turn off the proportional editing. We don't need that right now. And then let's go here to the face select, select this face. I'll just bring the face down a bit. And I'll go back to object mode, and I'll press control one to add a subdivision surface modifier with one level. And then I'll go into edit mode, and I'll add a loop cut by pressing Control R, and let's kind of sharpen this up down here. And that's just going to be one of the pebbles, so I will shade this smooth. So it's going to be like a pebble or a small rock. So we'll duplicate this and move it over, and we're just going to have four of them. So this second one, I'll scale it up a little bit and make it a bit longer, something like that. That'll be the second one. And then I'll duplicate this again, and I'll go into edit mode, and this one I'll scale up a bit more, bring it up a little bit, maybe bring it out a bit. I can also add a loop cut by pressing Control R and left click and right click so it stays in the center. And I think I'll bring it out a little bit this way. And then if I go to the face select, I'll select this face and I'll extrude it and scale it in just to make it a bit bumpy so the rock looks a little bit more unique. I could also select this face here and bring it out a little bit. And then I'll select this rock again and I'll duplicate it and bring it over here. Actually this rock here, I think I wanna go into edit mode and scale it down a little bit because it's a little bit too large. So just make it a bit better size, kind of fitting with the others. So then for this last one here, I'm gonna select the entire thing in edit mode and I'll scale it out a bit, but then I'll also scale it up so it's a little bit bigger, something like that. All right, so I'll go back to object mode. Let's kind of bring these closer together. And then if if I select all of them, I want to apply the subdivision surface, so I'll click on object. We will convert this, and we're going to convert it to a mesh. So if I go into edit mode, you can see it's all geometry now, but then I want to make these rocks a bit more low poly, because we'll be distributing them many times on the plane. So what I can do is just press B for the box select, and I can just box select all of these faces here, press the F key to fill a face there, and I can just continue to do that with all of the objects. So in edit mode, we're just gonna box select all of them. You can also hold down the shift and alt key and select the loop there, and then hold down the shift key and select the other faces and fill that, and then just select these and fill that. Also right here on the top, you could like select these here and press F to fill a face, just so they're a bit lower poly. Maybe I'll select all of these here and this and press F to fill a face there. All right, so I'll box select all the objects here. Let's press M to move them into a new collection. We'll click on new collection, and I'll just rename this to small rocks. Click on OK. So now they've been added into their own collection, so we'll be able to add them as a collection info in the geometry nodes. Now for the material, I'm actually just going to be adding the same material. So if I go into the rendered view and click over here on the materials, I'll click on the drop down, and I'm just going to add the large rock. So you could make some simple smaller rock material if you want to, but I find this large rock material to work great. So that's going to be it. So I'll go back to solid view. I can box select these small rocks and just kind of move them right over here and I'll zoom out. Let's maybe move these over here. So I will press Control S again to save, and this will wrap it up for part three. So in the next part, in part four, we're gonna be modeling the plants. We'll also be adding the ground and the mountains, and then we'll also be adding that animal skull into the scene, and we'll do all the materials for those objects. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the video end screen, and I'll also have the link in the description when it's released. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.